god. In today's video, we're surviving a hundred days on a Jurassic Island filled with dinosaurs. Ten of us stuck on here with no clue how to get home. The goals I have for this is to tame a T-Rex, make an anti-dinosaur and anti-weather fort, and slay the two bosses of Minecraft, the Wither and the Ender Dragon. Do you guys think we can pull this off? Watch till the end to find out. We're nearly at 60,000 subscribers, almost at 100,000. So make sure to subscribe to join the Before 100K Club. Finally, hit the like button for the algorithm and let's get straight into it. Day one, me and the boys was just chilling at the campsite, telling campfire stories. But listen, okay, it was all going good until Josh decided to do something that put the whole group in danger. It was a dark winter night, and Swidge and Sword and Sodi were in the nether, running around getting those ender pearls. All right, it was a mission that had to be done. Mm -hmm. It was dark. It was scary. Well, guys, so wait, this? wait, what is? Oh, oh, oh it's a die. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You had to bring it with you. Oh my god. <laughs> Before we knew it, once we realized where he was, he was being chased by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And that's when I knew. That instant, I knew without a doubt in my mind that this was going to be one of the most scuffed risings of a civilization that we could possibly ask for. Like, come on, bro. We just got here and we're being chased by a dinosaur. That's crazy. When we realized all 10 of us, yeah, you heard me right. All 10 of us decided to book it. Luckily for us, the trees got in the way of the T-Rex and couldn't catch up to us. That's when we started collecting some of the materials we needed to survive, such as wood and some started tools. But unluckily for us, we wasted a bunch of time at the campfire telling stories. So sunset was right around the corner. If that wasn't bad enough, Enough. not only did it start getting dark but it also started storming like bro now we got both mobs and weather to deal with not to mention the dinosaurs but i found myself a tent and i was chilling there with krizik and sword we were at first trying to stay the night there but then realized that we got separated from the group so we decided to get a move on and reunited with the boys in the cave that they found luckily for us it was right next to the cave once we were there i then decided to upgrade some of my tools and start mining a little bit not too much of course i kind of wanted to explore the outer region so i just waited until it was daytime days two to five to put it simple we had no idea how to survive in this world we were going through a famine as it is and when i say that i mean it it was legitimately an issue me and switch we wasn't gonna take this okay we needed food because obviously we need to regenerate our health anytime we get attacked and there's a lot of aggressive dinosaurs around and so we embarked on our journey to finding some food on the way there we got jumped by a little zombie but obviously we smoked him he had nothing on us besides the generic berries that we found we found this interesting looking fish we didn't exactly know what it was but we decided to attack it on instinct okay okay but real talk though this thing was hella fat like some lightning McQueen type fad. But within time, of course, we finally managed to kill it. It was just like any other fish and honestly just dropped a singular piece of fish. That was a bit of a bummer. We also managed to pass by another Tyrannosaurus Rex. It seemed like where they live. I don't know if this was the best place to pick. And this is when things started going wrong. We found this dinosaur that looked a little like an ostrich. We honestly thought it would drop some meat for us. We could cook it up, you know, easy meal. Nope, that thing was aggressive as heck. And actually Switch died from it. <laughs> oh my God, I saw you, I saw you like submerge into the water. And you were just gone. <laughs> that thing is evil, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh, that thing is evil. He did look pretty friendly. Oh my god. That's terrifying. After recollecting his stuff, we decided to camp out at the cave once again. We as a collective decided to get revenge and killed the ostrich looking dinosaur. I don't know why we thought it was a good idea, but right after we killed the ostrich dinosaur, we decided to fight a T-Rex collectively. To be fair, we did have the numbers on it, but once we started attacking the thing, it started demolishing us. We took a bit of an F, I'm not gonna lie. But we decided to just run back to the cave. Oh, remember that tent that we found in the beginning? Josh decided to loot it and make us all bed. So we all went to sleep. This made things a lot easier, especially if we didn't want to deal with the mob a night. The next upgrade past stone was iron, so we needed to get ourselves some iron. Me and Krizik, we decided to start mining. Let's just say that I may have forgotten the first rule of Minecraft, which is never dig straight down, because I fell in a lava pit and died. Day 6 to 10. Luckily for us, our bodies drop all the items within a physical body, and I was able to retrieve the items back. After getting them all back, we decided to move away from there, because there was honestly no caves around anywhere. In our really sad journey to looking for a cave and finding almost no caves, we find a village. 
Obviously, the trades were trash, but it did have some food for us, which we were really in need of. And this is where we got ourselves the first ever waystone throughout the entire series. We also had to camp out there during the night because we were being jumped by mobs. Upon leaving the caves, we also get attacked by Mother Nature herself. It's pouring, all right? It was a storm. We just wanted to go back home into our lovely cave and just call it a night, honestly. We were soaking wet and also stupidly lost. We figured out how to use the map system of ours, but even so, we were still hella lost. We were kind of struggling to get back to where we were, and we traveled quite a bit. We finally got back to the base, slapped the waystone right in the middle of the cave, and we were honestly just exhausted from the journey we went on. We were at the base while everyone else was taking their own journeys, but Sodi decided to pop back into the cave in full iron and a shield with a sword ready to stab something. It was mental while we couldn't even find a single cave. This man was stacked, but despite all that, he actually blessed me and Krizik up with a full set of iron armor. So that just comes to show you, not only did he have enough armor for himself, he had enough armor for both me and Krizik, bro. That's ridiculous. This honestly helped us out a ton. When it became daytime, I decided to plant some of the carrots and potatoes that I got from the village. I didn't want some singular food source to be the main food source of ours, and I wanted to, you know, diversify it a bit. We can't keep eating the same thing over and over again. What are we, cavemen? Okay, cut. Uh, never mind. I spent most of this time looking through recipes and eventually it became nighttime, but Switch did manage to come back. Okay, so we've had it pretty rough up until now, as if it couldn't get any worse, but right when we decided to leave the cave to finally get some work done, a tornado decides to hit us. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. This is not good. This is not good. Uh, and in the midst of all of it, Josh gets taken by the tornado. This was not looking good for us, I could tell you that much. After the storm was done, we took a look at the aftermath of what happened, and it was devastating. The entire area was so barren. The leaves were gone, the waters were empty, there's no fish there, the animals are all just deceased. It was starting to look like we just came out of a fallout shelter to a nuclear blown up world. We kept our heads up though. In the next few days, I started going mining and started collecting some resources and also decided to start looking around for a place to build at. Days 21 to 25. I listen up. At first, I was going to base with Sword and Krizik because they both wanted to live together in the same like mansion or whatever that we wanted to build in the beginning. But somewhere between the lines, I lost contact with them because I didn't know where they was. So I ended up just vibing with Switch and eventually we decided to team up. Regardless, we were all planning to live together relatively quickly close it was a pretty good move having someone to base with if i do say so myself me and him we started looking for a place to build the base we wanted to build it in the initial island that the cave was in but obviously that place was a little devastated so instead when we reunited with everyone else at the cave they decided to actually use the plains biome that was right in front of us but regardless we wanted to build tree houses and so we needed wood for that so we decided to start chopping down a bunch of trees and this time i also decided to go on a mining trip right afterwards so that was something rather than mining for iron and stuff i kind of mined cobblestone i need some blocks to waste Days 26 to 30. Upon going up, we were all gonna go to the new area and start setting up base, but then we realized there's another storm brewing, so we decided to come right back into the cave and wait that one out as well. Eventually, the storm cleared out and we all went on the move. When going into the new area, we find out that Siren actually captured the first ever dinosaur of the series. I'm starting a, a dino zoo at some point. Ooh. And, oh, this, is gonna, this is gonna be our first capture, our first attendee. His name is Barry. Oh, let's get a peek. Let's get a peek. Where is he? Okay. Ooh. Oh, he's under there. Yeah, come from this angle. Come from this angle. It wasn't tamed, but he blocked it in within cobblestone, and somehow it survived the storm. Despite it being a bit of a tiny dinosaur, it still had some toughness to it. As I mentioned before, the famine was still going on. The berries that I collected was just not, it was just not it, you know? I was eating rotten flesh, berries, anything I could find. Days 31 to 35. After all of that exploration, we decided to finally head back and meet up with the boys. We got a bunch of food. We found a bunch of structures, a bunch of interesting stuff, but nothing too notable. I noticed that someone was already riding a dinosaur. I was falling behind a bit and honestly needed to catch up. The squad was thinking of building a gigantic wall to surround ourselves with a bunch of deflectors, weather deflectors to be specific. That way, whatever we built within the walls was 100% safe and the weather wouldn't be able to tear it apart. Take the L, Mother Nature, Goofy. I met up with Switch and started basing with him. He already had a little bit of a settlement working out. Okay, okay. Man's making moves. He said it was going to be the first thing that he's going to build in 
in the area just to have a place to put down his stuff, I started looking into how I could get myself a dinosaur. And the easiest way was literally to get some string, right? But string wasn't the easiest to get, especially with the spiders looking like that. Some creepy spiders, bro. Hella creepy. So instead, what we decided to do, we took the wolf, put it into the analyzer that me and Krizik actually got from the village, and we analyzed it, right? Analyzing it actually gives us string from the wolf. Well, there's a chance. It also kind of gives us sheep DNA. I didn't know what that sheep DNA was for. It was a little sus, if you ask me. Now, believe it or not, but the way you tame dinosaurs is by making a whip. And that's exactly the item we had to craft with the string that we got from the analyzer. So we crafted one up and got ourselves a Bloxosaurus? Yo. Is that the dinosaur that you have over there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm hmm I apologize to all those dinosaur lovers, but I have no idea what this dinosaur is. But it looked cool, so we tamed it. Yeah. The boys were looking into some wall designs because we were going to put up some pretty big walls so that dinosaurs don't randomly attack us. And here's a really fast forwarded clip of me eating lunch while in Minecraft. So while everyone else was progressing in days, I wasn't. But we were back in this, all right? So the updates to the place that we were at was Josh had a house and a pen. Switch had a pen for his dinosaur as well. And the walls were being built up, as you can see. I decided to drop by this little hole that I found, but it was actually JPEX's place. It was a nice design, but I didn't know what he was planning with it. JPEX was actually one of the people that was a little bit scared of the weather. I'm not gonna lie. He was a little paranoid that all of his stuff will be blown away. So he decided to make one of them underground bases. While me, on the other hand, is way above ground. And I'm gonna be making a treehouse, so... It's more prone to get blown away, but you know, we have the anti-tornado things, so uh, I think we're fine. Days 36 to 40. I began work on my treehouse. I started planting some saplings, but then realized I needed bone meal. Where was I gonna get bone meal from? At first I was thinking I was just gonna go cave or mining, but we could just go to the starter cave and collect some bones from there because I'm sure some people left some bones there. We explored a bit. We used both the bones that we got from the cave and some bones that we got from just exploring out in the wilderness. But once we got back, take a look at the progress they made. Look at the progress they made with the walls. Lucky for us, Josh knew his way around the mods and managed to make ourselves a cobblestone generator, which definitely speeded things up. I gave up. These trees were ridiculous. Every time we bone mealed a tree, it ended up being this weird small micro tree instead of the big trees that were outside. So we had to figure out a way around it and the only solution was to customly build the tree. I didn't really mind, not to mention I also wanted to make it like a 2x2 two two instead of a 1x1 one one that the tree initially was. So it honestly wasn't that big of a problem for me. I, I yeah, also gave up on the tree thing, I'm gonna, just gonna build one because... Yeah, I kind of <laughs> spent all my bones on it. <laughs> We started working on it just a little bit though, not too much. I was also told that the cobblestone wall was taking a little too long and they needed some assistance with building it. So I decided to help out. And this is where things started getting a little interesting because while me and Coffee were slaving away at the wall, we noticed that there was a lack of people just among us. And that's because they went on a trip to the nether without letting us know. So we were really the only two people working on the walls. And we noticed that. It was very confusing, but we knew that the walls had to be somewhat built and we were running out of time. I was also running a little bit low on food, so I met up with Switch when he got back and he said that there was a mushroom biome in the nether. So I decided to go there myself. Days 41 to 45. Uh, in the nether, there's like a mushroom biome as soon as you enter the portal, so that's what I'm kind of doing for food right now. Oh, snap, for real? I'm about to go check it out. Yeah. By the time I entered the nether, the others actually left the nether. They weren't there for too long because they were experiencing a lot of mobs and a lot of casualties. But I wasn't trying to do anything too risky. I just wanted to go in there, grab some food, and go right back out. Okay, well, that was a lie. My curiosity peaked and I explored it. Just a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. And I went straight back. Now, the thing is, during my adventure in the nether, in that meantime, there was a lot that actually happened in the overworld with everyone else. And I was a little confused about it. It was both me and Coffee that was really confused about the situation that was happening in the overworld. Because when I got back there, there was just drama everywhere. I even saw a couple dead bodies around the place. What I did end up noticing is that there was a bit of a meeting going on that I wasn't invited to and it was between Krizik and Siren. Although normally I wouldn't be intrigued, I wanted to hear what it was about, okay? I wasn't here for a bit in the nether. I'm trying to catch up to what's going on. Days 46 to 50. So we snuck around the back and decided to go right behind the wall or technically outside of the wall from their perspective.
From the conversation that I eavesdropped on, they were planning on killing someone, possibly even exiling them from the kingdom that we have set up here. But besides that, I also noticed that I wasn't the only one snooping around. Lo and behold, to the left of me, Josh was there, crouching, trying to listen in on the conversation as well. We're like ninjas in the night, except it's daytime. Then shortly afterwards, JPEX was slain by Sodi. After this went down, both me and Josh decided to scatter. It was probably for the best anyways. But the question remained, what was going on? Can I trust Josh? And and what was going on with the stability of the place. I decided to make a couple tunnels just in case they decide to meet up there again. I'd have a much better place and not as much as an out in the open spot where people can see me. And it didn't take too long before chaos started erupting. It was an all out war between JPEX and everybody else. Apparently JPEX stole something that wasn't his and now he's being hunted down. I asked Syred about it and he said he stole all of Syred's stuff and now he's running away. He also seemed to have this thing called the grappling hook and he was basically Spider-Man. Like yo, I want one too. Obviously, I wasn't really there at that time when the situation erupted, so I couldn't really do much about it and I didn't know who was telling the truth, whether Syred really did get his stuff taken or JPEX could have possibly gotten framed. It didn't take long until he was finally caught by all of them. Josh, Syred, and even Krizik was there along with Sodi, all interrogating him and slicing him away. It seemed a little messed up, but I definitely didn't want to get involved. At least not until I got stacked. So your boy went on another mining trip because we needed more iron and just in general, I wanted to make that grappling hook thing, but I knew it was going to take a bit of grinding. Day is 51 to 55. I was joined by Coffee and JPEX and we went around looking for a nether pool. Using the nether pool, we decided to pour some water onto it. We got a bunch of obsidian and caught up with the rest of them with that lovely obsidian armor. As far as I could tell, JPEX was kind of banished from the kingdom, which really did suck. So I didn't want to be seen in public with them. After coming back to the main base of operations once again, I decided to take a look at everyone's armor and we were pretty equal. I'm not going to lie. Don't worry, your boy's going to catch up in no time. Trust it. But despite the fact that JPEX is banished from the kingdom, he decided to enter the kingdom once again and called it its home, but then things started getting a little rough. Instead of leaving out the front door, he left through the nether for some reason. And to prove to everyone else that I was on their side, I decided to block off the nether with some walls. Afterwards, things got a little bit more tame, but eventually Switch managed to get some guns. He managed to actually dual wield some guns and shoot Siren by accident. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, not, not as accidental as it seems like. But that's beyond the point. Phase 56 to 70. Got some more obsidian, decided to stack up a bit. And this is where our build began. I wanted to build a tree house, but the trees wouldn't grow from normal sapling, so I had to build my own custom tree. And this is a little bit of a time lapse of me doing some of it. You guys are lucky because you got the simplified version. I had to sit there for days worth trying to build this thing and making it look like a normal tree. You know how easy it is to make a tree look abnormal? Really easy. If you need something challenging in Minecraft, try making one of these trees. This is what the stem of the thing looked like. I had to make a bit of an upscale version of the original tree and not to mention the original tree was only like a one by one and this is a two by two so i had to do a couple you know changes to it and there we go that is our finished product that is the tree now we just got to work on the tree house it's like it never changes we're still going through a famine i have to use berries just to survive and this mushroom stew that i got it was ridiculous but throughout that entire process that's what we use as our main food source and there's some of the progress. That's a little bit of the platform that we made. I was just making sure it looked good and I was gonna go back up and finish it up. And there it is. We have our tree house. It's finally done. Okay, I know, I know. It's not the biggest tree house, but we didn't need that much space. I just needed a place to put all my stuff in and put my bed at, okay? And it looked pretty nice, okay? Josh, for some reason, actually came by the tree house and he wanted to talk to me about something. You, uh, you doing all right? Yeah, what's up? No, not much. Wait, what the heck? What, what happened? This thing just disappeared. What thing? This is what happened. Now, I didn't accept it due to the fact that he gave me a diamond for it. But instead, I accepted it because I felt like he was on our side. He didn't seem that bad. Or so I thought. So yeah, now there's a security camera in the treehouse that nobody knows about. Pretty clever, right? After all of this, we decided to meet back at the middle. Siren and Krizik actually came right out of the nether. Instead of building their houses like we all planned to do during this time session, they decided to come back from the nether with a new set of armor. Except although it was more powerful, it didn't look as good. And this is exactly why. Cue the clip. Yeah, the armor set look like boogers. Bleh. Disgusting. We got into a bit of an issue afterwards though because the pet dinosaurs that we had were a little bit rampant and they started breaking some of the blocks and Sodi had to slay one of them. We don't know whose it was but one of our dinosaurs were dead. Oh right and I almost forgot I had a diamond claw or like the little grapple things. It was the upgraded version of that but I didn't want to use it yet because I wanted to make an ender claw so I just saved mine up while other people wasted theirs. We also decided to take a look as to what Switch was working on because while I was working on my treehouse, 
He was working on a farm. At last, we have a fully functional farm for once in the series. Say goodbye to the famine that we were in. We finessed it, you know, we're, we're advancing. I took a bit of a break, but once I got back, Switch's house or the side of his house was fully functional and made. We had a bit of another expedition planned out because we missed out on the first one. We need some blaze powder, especially to make the ender grappling hook, which was definitely something I wanted as soon as possible. But another thing I missed while I was gone was actually the election. After everything I think we've seen is, uh, I vote for Siren. Yeah. We've had our differences, mm -hmm. but we, I 100% agree. We need some order in this town. The dude, we're all about surviving this together. Good leadership skills. Cyrid was elected mayor. I didn't know how to feel about this, but regardless, we still went on that Nether expedition. But now look at this, right? The Nether wasn't just the normal Nether. It had all these different biomes, and not to mention, some of these biomes were actually really deadly. Especially this annoying one that had these plants that actually prickled you to death, They're like cactuses, but tiny. On our search to finding a Nether castle, we actually ended up finding this biome with blue fire. Now it's not the 1.16 one since this version is 1.12 and Switch managed to get himself cursed. He started going all over the place and even ended up in lava. I honestly didn't know what to do. Our best choice was to bounce out of that biome and that's exactly what we did. Not too long after we finally managed to get ourselves a nether castle. At first we couldn't find a blaze spawner but eventually we managed to find one and get all the blaze powder we'd ever want or need for the entire series matter of fact. That's all we needed. We didn't spend too much time there and we headed back really quickly because we didn't want to miss out on anything. Also that was it. It didn't take us too long and we finally managed to craft ourselves the ender claw. Now when I say this thing is OP, I mean it. Movement with this thing is so much easier. You can literally grapple onto something so far away from you. It's ridiculous. That alongside my feather falling boots was honestly really overpowered. It didn't even take that long to get ourselves into a predicament because we somehow ended up all getting transported into the deep dark dimension. We were all really confused and didn't really know what to do there. So we just decided to start mining in a direction. We thought we were really low underground Ground, but it turns out that we were super high in the air and we started mining downwards. Me and Switch were one of the two people that actually managed to escape first and find the rest of the dimension. Turns out that there's a bunch of mobs down there, along with a bunch of ores and also the darkness consumes you. But what we didn't take into consideration when going down there is that we weren't following the rest of the group. It didn't take long before we realized that we all got split up. Not to mention, a lot of them were heading back. We grappled to the top, I placed down a torch and we awaited assistance. We didn't know where everyone was. We had no idea actually. We didn't bring any warp scrolls. We didn't bring anything to get ourselves back. And honestly, if we go out into that darkness with the three torches we have together collectively, our stuff, everything that we've gotten up to so far would have all been gone. But lo and behold, they came back for us. They sent a rescue team. Wait, I see, I see Josh, I see Josh. Yeah, 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 Josh, help. Man, were we glad to see them. Afterwards, we decided to explore a little bit and see what the place has to offer. But it was honestly way too hard to see and not to mention there were way too many mobs. So we just decided to head back. That was a creepy dimension. I don't think we're heading back there anytime soon. At least I'd hope not. Upon coming back, there was no shortage of drama. Josh and Cyrid get into a bit of a predicament and Josh gets killed twice. It doesn't take very long until the alarms were rang. And before we knew it, the place was in a state of martial law. All of our weapons, our guns, everything we use to defend ourselves, was being taken by the government there. Not to mention the little bit of a power struggle they're going through. Officially, Josh and Cyrid were going to have a fight to the death to see who would take power over the area. I couldn't believe it. Me and Switch, we weren't with it. We put our main sets of armor, tools, weapons. We all put it in our inner chest. I was so happy that I actually went out of my way of making that. This is where things got a little bit intense. We had to play every single card of ours correctly or we would have been exiled like JPEX. We devised a plan. Me and Switch, we decide to make a bunch of knives and hand those in as our weapons. Wait, 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 wait. Do you have a place to put everything in? Because if we get other people's stuff, we'll be the most powerful people. Oh, I have a password protected chest that no one can get into. It's okay. Okay, so we should we should first wait for Krizik and um Cyrid to give in their stuff. I also had a fake obsidian sword. It wasn't my actual one. It just had a measly sharpness one on it. So I was willing to give that in. I didn't mind at all. Day 71 to 75. On our way there, we also met up with Coffee. And apparently, Coffee wasn't too fond of the situation either himself. He actually wanted to rob the place. That's kind of brilliant if you think about it. If everyone's stuff, all of the guns, all of the weapons were at one place, we'd be able to take it for ourselves if we robbed it. Instead of sneaking around the bushes, it was more of a heist. And I wanted part. So did Switch. Our goal in this was to be the distraction. But before we could be the distractions, we had to give in the weapons that we held just so we could lose some suspicion off of us. It's an obsidian sword. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right. Uh, cool. Do I need to give him my armor as well? No, no, no. no okay. Just no weapons. Just Make weapons. Sure you can't harm anybody. You all know? right, all right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. You got, you got nothing else? You sure? No, I got a bunch more. Here you go. 
Oh, yep. Adrian. <laughs> what the? Sheesh, you dirty devil. All right, hold on. Let me, uh, let me get these loaded in here. Yep. Dang, bro. Man, you, 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 uh, you, uh, you don't seem like the type, but I mean, I guess I can see just, it. Just, just remember, just remember where it. I put him, okay? Just remember those are mine, all right? We gave him the stuff and walked right out. We then regrouped. I'm trying to be mayor soon, so... You know, can't have any such stuff going on well, like this, man. Well, win, I'm glad you turned nice him in. Back. When you win, can I have my knives back? Listen, you can buy some weapons back if you want them. Listen, I, I got the good stuff. I got what explosives. What in the capitalism is going on? Bro, I got explosives. I got mines, hidden mines. I got... I got... Claymores, I got uh, shotguns, pistols, snipers, you name it, buddy. I got it, alright? Josh, Just come Josh back I have get nothing the good stuff in my inventory. I have nothing to defend myself with. And after regrouping, shortly afterwards, we went right back into the store, acting as the distraction. While we were distracting Josh, Coffee placed traps all over the front of the store, just so we don't get any interruptions and no one tries to leave the area. And then he enters the shop in full red armor with a pistol aimed at Josh's head. There you go. That's what? Everybody down. Oh my gosh. This is a robbery. Get behind me, it's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> oh, listen, I don't want any trouble. And before we knew it, it was over. Coffee was caught red-handed. He was trapped with one of Josh's alert systems and put into jail for safekeeping. For the rest of us, we seemed like any other person in that situation. That was the intent. Coffee made it so we wouldn't take any of the blame. And in exchange, we weren't gonna let him stay in prison. We eavesdropped on a bit of the conversations they had in there. Both me and Switch patiently waited until Josh left the facility. While waiting on that, I also started looking through some of Josh's chests to see if he had anything valuable. And I noticed that he had a scarab. This was actually a crucial part of something that I had planned for later on. Despite how much me and Switch tried, we couldn't get inside of the prison. We had to go get Siren, who knows how the thing works. He secretly let Coffee out of the cell with a bed, and we did the finishing touch with breaking him loose from the room itself. Day 76 to 80. Now that Coffee was free, we didn't have to worry too much about that, but I definitely wanted to put this scarab into use. Me and Switch set out on a quick adventure to find ourselves a T-Rex. Now, if you guys don't know, basically to get ourselves a T-Rex, what we have to do is lower it to very low amounts of health to the point where it's resting. Put the scarab on top of it, and it's basically ours. That's exactly what we did. Fortunately, there wasn't one that far away from us. The gear that we had, it was no match for us. So honestly, it was a breeze. We then put it into a secured location and we kept it there for a bit. We were gonna wait for the right time to declare throne. We wanted it for ourselves because clearly so far, the people that have been running it, it's just been utter chaos. Once we arrive back, acting like we went on a huge mining trip, we actually hear the sound of the alarm. This is because Syred calls everyone to the front and says that the fight is about to begin. Where are we fighting? Whoa. Citizens! Whoa. Citizens of Uga Shaka Kingdom! It is time for the battle of the town. We went to this wasteland that they found a while back, and that is exactly where the fight went down. It was a back and forth battle. It was really intense, and at the end of the day, Josh was victorious. Sired, on the other hand, was not happy about this. Days 81 to 90, we then all come back to the hometown of ours to have the declaring ceremony to where Josh is awarded his throne. All right, boys, first order of business as your new mayor. Give me a nice Uga Chaka chant. Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka. That's right, boys. Louder, louder. Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka. Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka. Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka. Let's go. Let's beat the dragon, boys. We didn't wait a second. Me and Switch quickly ran back to the place that we located the T-Rex. And we had the plan in motion. We had already set up explosives down by the wall. And we were going to enter through with a T-Rex. But out of everything that I had planned, there was one thing. Just one thing that I didn't put into consideration. Just as easily as I managed to capture the T-Rex and make it mine. They cold-bloodedly murdered it. We had snipers, rifles, shotguns. It was no match. And in the midst of all that chaos, my treehouse was burning down to a crisp. Everything was gone. The house we built, the T-Rex that we tamed, all that progress was for nothing. I couldn't do anything. All I could do was accept defeat. I'm sick and tired of people trying to test me, but hey, I understand, you know, group of guys, you know, things get a little tense. We were cavemen at one point, so. That's true. Okay, well, 
I'm with you guys now. But then we decided to put our differences aside. At the end of the day, if we wanted to accomplish our goals, the goals we had for this world, for this series, we had to work together. There was no other way around it. Josh quickly went into his weapons shop and supplied us all with guns. Then we went to the starting cave where it all began and decided to spawn in the wither. I was a little concerned at first for all well-being, but honestly, with the guns that we had, the wither was no match for us. And we managed to slay it. There was only one thing left to do. The last thing on our to-do list was to kill off the ender dragon. Days 90 to 97. This was no easy journey. There were so many of us getting lost. We didn't know where anyone was until one person found the stronghold and we all met up back there. Days 97 to 100. We lit up the portal in preparation of going in. And there we were. We were finally at the end. We had a bunch of ammo. We had a bunch of guns. And there was a bunch of us. The dragon had no chance. And the dragon was down. All we saw were the explosions from the dragon disintegrating just to mere experience points and at last the final trophy that the dragon truly gave us was the dragon egg on day 99 we jumped into the portal and went right back to the place we called home and finally right at the center of it all right next to the throne placed down the ender dragon egg